In this video, I'm going to walk through two examples of how to set up a finite element model inside of Abacus to simulate the effects of an initial defect in the composite assembly. The first example I'm going to walk through is how to simulate the effects of an initial delamination that exists between two composite parts in a skin stringer subassembly. And the second example I'm going to walk through is how to simulate the effects of an initial defect in the composite laminate and how this will affect the structural response of our composite laminate. So for the first example, I have a skin stringer subassembly and I want to simulate the effect of an initial delamination between my stringer and my skin. Now to do this, I created a cohesive layer of elements between my stringer and my skin that you can see here highlighted in red. And the material model assigned to these cohesive elements I created using Helios MCT. So how I set this model up is I created three different parts. I have a stringer part, I have a skin part, and then I have a cohesive layer part that is tied to both my stringer and my skin. So on my cohesive layer part, I want to simulate how an initial delamination region will propagate through my cohesive bond between my stringer and my skin to affect the overall structural response of my composite assembly. So how I set that up is in my cohesive layer part, I created two different sections. The gray section you see here has a material created using the Helios MCT cohesive GUI that is assigned a pristine traction for the normal and shear directions. And then the red section you see here also is a Helios MCT material. But what I did is I set the traction values at failure to a very, very low value compared to the pristine traction values that typically cause failure in a cohesive material. So I have a very, very weakened region highlighted in red here, and then I have a normal cohesive material property in gray. So what this will do is in a nonlinear analysis where we have multiple increments throughout our load history. In the very first few load increments, this region in red will fail because the tractions are set so low that the initial stresses in the cohesive layer will be high enough to cause an initial failure very, very quickly in the analysis history in the red region. And then because the gray region is a normal set of cohesive material properties, we'll be able to simulate how this initial failed region will affect the initiation and propagation of damage into the, the normal cohesive material layer. So this in effect simulates what would happen if you had an initial delamination in your cohesive bond between your stringer and your skin and how that initial delamination will initiate and propagate through the rest of your pristine uh, cohesive uh, material layer. So one other way we could model how an initial delamination will propagate into the surrounding cohesive material is not to set two different materials and have one very, very weak material, but to actually model a, a hole or a region of this cohesive layer that is removed. So in my composite part, I could cut out a hole that represents the extent of my initial delamination and then I can see how that hole where there's no material, it's just a void between the, the stringer and the skin, I can see how that, that void will affect the initiation and propagation of material failure in my cohesive layer. The second example I want to walk through is how to simulate the effects of an initial defect in a composite laminate. So the model I have here is a composite laminate with two holes that have bolts running through these holes that are represented by these rigid surfaces. And this laminate's being pulled in tension. Now what I want to simulate 
is how an initial defect in a region of the composite laminate will affect the structural response of this composite assembly when pulled in tension. So what this red region is highlighting is say an initial region in my composite laminate that is damaged due to perhaps a saw cut or some other manufacturing defect that actually cuts a little chunk out of my composite material. And this defect could have a varying level of damage associated with it. It could just have a little bit of matrix failure, so we see a little bit of matrix crazing, or it could actually be a notch that's cut out of this composite laminate. And so in that case, we have fibers that are, that are failed also. And I'm going to walk through how we, how we would use the Helios MCT software package to simulate the effect that this defect will have if indeed it has different damage states. So maybe just a little bit of matrix damage or if it has full fiber failure. So the way I set up this model is my laminate. I assigned a Helios MCT material using the Helios MCT ply graphical user interface. Now the reason I'm using Helios MCT is because I can simulate how this initial defect will cause initiation and propagation of composite material failure throughout the rest of my composite laminate. But also a unique aspect of using Helios MCT is that Helios MCT will track the damage state of the composite material. So there's three different damage states associated with a composite material. There is an undamaged composite material, there is a composite material that has matrix damage, and then there's a composite material that has fiber damage. And that's very important because I will assign the initial damage to my initial defect region using one of those material states. And I'll show you that a little bit later in our video. So first what I had to do is I had to identify a region of my composite assembly that is an initial defect that I can assign different damage levels to. So to do that I created an element set that I named failed element set and that is the red highlighted region in my composite laminate. So I can create this element set inside of Abacus CAE. And then to identify this element set as a, as a defect, I need to actually modify my Abacus input file. And what I did here is I set what in Abacus is called an initial condition to this failed element set. And this is a two line uh, keyword that I have to enter manually into my abacus input file before any kind of step definition in my input file. So how this keyword works is you type in star initial conditions and then you have type equals solution and then on the next line you have the name of your element set in this case it was failed L set and then this last value is very important because as I mentioned earlier there are different different damage states associated with the composite material that's defined using Helios MCT. So an undamaged material state has a value of 1 associated with it. A matrix damaged uh, composite material has a value of 2 associated with it and a fiber damaged composite material has a, has a damage value of 3 associated with it. And where these values come from is they're actually the damage state that is output by Helios MCT and viewed in the uh, Abacus viewer after an analysis has been run. So you can view how a material is failed by looking at a value of 1 is undamaged, a value of 2 is matrix damaged and a value of 3 is fiber damaged and all of this is a field output variable that can be viewed as a contour just like stress and strain can be viewed as a contour. But the additional benefit of Helios MCT is that we can assign an initial damaged value to, a, to an element set and that's what we're doing in this case when we're simulating the effect of an initial defect in the composite laminate. 
So we're saying that this material in the element set failed L set has an initial damage condition of three. That means the properties are reduced to a set of properties that are indicative of a fiber failed um, composite material. And so we can also set this value to two, indicating that it's a, a material property set that it's associated with a matrix failure. So we can see the difference of the different levels of damage, whether it's matrix damaged or fiber damaged initially, and how that will affect the overall failure progression and structural response of our composite laminate. So these two examples were two examples of how we can use Helios MCT to simulate the effects of an initial defect in a composite assembly and see how that defect will affect the overall uh, failure characteristics of our composite structure. I encourage you to contact us at info at firehole.com if we can provide any inf more information about how to solve these challenging simulation problems where we want to simulate the effects of defects in composite assemblies.